I think I liked him when he was at Williams. Yeah. Maybe I liked him losing. I think it was the. He's a likable loser. It was the moment that he walked out. They were promoting the 007 movie, I think, and he wore that suit and he had people following him in the pits. Mm. He had the the topper hat. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was at that moment for me. But I think we share that same moment. It's like, this guy's trying way too fucking yeah. hard. Yeah, no, I agree. Welcome to Friends with Cars. F1 Talk. Podcast. Podcast. Back, back, back again. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're right. back missed the last one, so. And then we did miss the last podcast as well yes, for we the last race. That was the French, uh, or as you might call it, the French uh, race. Uh, it was just a busy weekend. Lots going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we skipped that podcast. We did have predictions for that one. I don't know if Jessica had predictions for that one. No, I don't think But I think either. we had them for that, for that one. Um, and I, I don't know who won. I don't remember who won. Oh, man. Oh, edit. We'll edit this out. We'll it was such out. a long time ago. I'm pretty sure it was Verstappen, no? Uh, oh, yeah. It was Verstappen, Lewis, and George. Oh, and George. It's the same podium that we had today. How can yes. I forget? That's right. Same exact podium. So, um, RJ, our guest podcaster, predicted Signs, Leclerc, and Max. Obviously, he was wrong. Wrong. I guess Paris, Leclerc, Hamilton... I was wrong as well. And then, uh, James, you picked Perez, Sainz, and Lewis. And you were also wrong. Wow. Uh, you said Lewis P4, actually. But, yeah, so we were all wrong. Uh, apparently, we know nothing about Formula 1 <laughs> when it comes to what's going on. So, that's, so anyway, we missed the last one. Uh, so we're not going to cover that one at all. But yeah. we are going to cover Hungary. And we just finished watching it. And I want to start off with... I love the international announcers. I think we talked about the fact that the Formula One TV announcers are crap. Yeah, we don't like them. So we always switch to the international feed. But I will tell you, those guys are also savages because <laughs> yes. the race is easily two hours long, plus whatever time they had to be at the track before. With everything they have to do, Mattia with Ferrari <laughs> left his post to go behind the garage. And they were like, he's leaving. Where's he going? <laughs> and we're thinking, maybe he's got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, leave him alone. And, of course, he came back later, and they're like, oh, maybe it was a comfort break. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why you got to throw his laundry out I there? Know. I you gotta know. Think, like, oh, he's stepping out. Is he going to go pee? Is it, is it one? Is it two? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What did he eat? It's How like, dare he not invite us to go with him and see what he's doing? <laughs> yeah. And, of course, they were interviewing him today also from the wall. So I wonder if they were like, take the microphone with you. <laughs> we'll talk in there. You can do two things at once, right? Or three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, well, first things first, let's talk about that amazing, incredible Ferrari strategy. Nobody can beat Ferrari better than Ferrari itself. Wow. Well, the big, the big. Th- oh, go ahead. No, no. Here you. I was going to say the the one thing that caught our attention was the fact that they put. Charles Leclerc on a really bad tire strategy. Right. When they saw people who it wasn't working with. Yeah, that's right. There was a couple of drivers, at least two, that have gone out on the hearts, and they said it's not working out. Someone at Ferrari said, yeah, but we can do it better. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, they didn't. And they ended up switching to the softs anyways. And that, exactly. And, and that three stops, three stop strategy for Charles. And we know that he, Charles had a pit because he hadn't switched tires. So he's got to switch the compound. Mm-hmm. Again, you could have gone. If you're going to stop anyway, why not just go with the soft? Give him an advantage mm-hmm. to get ahead. And he would have had the advantage to get ahead, but they didn't do it. Now, right. I do also appreciate that Charles. He's a he's a good driver. He's a great driver. He's always sending it 100, percent and I appreciate that about him. Mm-hmm. That's why he's his own worst enemy. Right. It's like you can chill, dude, and you can actually do you know go for the long game. And he doesn't do that. He's just I'm just going to send it. He did do that today as well, which I appreciated because it was some great moves. Mm-hmm. But again. Ferrari was out there to say, nah, that's not the way we're going to do it. We can't allow that. We're gonna, we can't be amazing. Well, do you remember, not last season, but it was the season before that, and literally all the memes about Ferrari's strategy and everything like that. It's just starting completely over. I don't know who is their lead strategist shit, the strategist there, but ultimately they need to be fired because they're terrible. I think strategist shit is correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just absolutely terrible, and I don't know why they keep doing this to themselves. It's obvious something's not working. So I think we can all agree that Ferrari doesn't have a strategist. They have a strat of shit. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they should be hiring for anyone. <laughs> Hire us. There you go. Hire us. We know what we're doing. Uh, Mercedes. Mercedes. 
during the qualifier, uh, Hamilton had a DRS issue and he couldn't get the speed. Uh, Russell amazingly, surprisingly had a clean lap and it was faster than everybody else. I would love to hear the radio from Carlos Sainz because once Leclerc finished his lap and Verstappen had a car issues, I'm pretty sure they were on the radio with the Carlos saying, you, oh, you're set, buddy. And then Russell, out of nowhere, <laughs> takes it away from takes it away from him. So I would listen to that radio. Maybe they do have it. I gotta listen to it. As white men usually do. Take, <laughs> take it from you. They'll take it from you. <laughs> Stay strong, Carlos. Um, it's a hate crime. <laughs> it was a hate crime. But Ferrari had really good pace. It did really well. I, of course, we always know Ferrari. I mean, uh, Mercedes is sandbagging. But they had a really good race. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Hamilton going to second. But what I liked the most, and we talked about it during the race is that Hamilton was behind, behind Russell, and he definitely had the pace, mm-hmm. but there was no team orders. Right. right. They didn't say let him through. They didn't say catch up. They just kind of stayed quiet, and it's like they knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe they talked about it. Maybe Russell knows when Hamilton's behind you, you got to let him through. That's how you got the seat. But right. none of that happened. No, and I think that's good because it causes a less – maybe they learn from Bottas and their relationship, like just the turmoil that like Bottas had as being the second driver. I think it's probably better for team morale in those situations. Like both of them are really good drivers. I know you hate Russell, and that's great. We hate him. Um, but both of them are really good drivers, so I don't think that they think – that they're going to crash. Whereas like, not that Bottas wasn't a good driver, but Bottas was a, a hot headed driver. Like he was there to fight. And I don't think necessarily like Russell's there to fight, but not in the same way that Bottas was. Bottas always felt like he had something to prove. Russell doesn't feel like he has anything to prove. I just think that Mercedes values Russell more, more than Bottas. Really? I think so. He came up as a, a Mercedes reserve driver or a reserve uh, a Mercedes developer driver. But oh, did not did Bottas not? Do, I don't we think don't so. That. I think he just was a transfer from a, another Mercedes powered unit team. Yeah, he was with Williams. Williams. He was with Williams. I don't think yeah. he came up in the development program. I just think they value him more. And if Lewis is considering on retiring in the next couple of seasons, George is going to be the one to replace him to be the more dominant driver. Mm-hmm. So they think they just value him more. Mm-hmm. That's in my opinion. I, should they? Sorry, I just spit. Should they? Should they value him more? I don't think so. I don't but. know. I mean, it didn't. I mean, we'll get into this later. Um, didn't Bottas DNF today, and he has all those problems? Hey, like, hey, hey, hey. Bottas is king. Yeah. He might not have a kingdom or a throne, but he is but king. king. But he does have a lot of issues, and he does. I feel like he does go super hard in the paint, and Bottas? yeah, and that I think also causes him issues. Whereas, like Russell's, I think more level-headed. And like easy going about it. Russell's more cunning. Russell is more of a, a strategy, snake. a snake. Mm-hmm. And when you're a snake, you know, you just you, buy your. You're time. an opportunist, opportunist, mm-hmm. and you're just trying to strike and bite somebody, mm-hmm. which is what it did to Sergio last race. He caught right. him sleeping, and it was it was lights out for mm-hmm. Sergio. Mm-hmm. So, but I, you're right. I think Bottas is a better driver than Russell. Um, as of now, I think Bottas did have. A great run with Mercedes. Yes, you're right. I think they favor Hamilton, and he was affected by that. Um, but now that he's with Alfa Romeo, he's probably happier. Mm-hmm. But just still doing not the as same successful thing. Mm-hmm. because the same thing's happening. So right. whether it be car reliability or whether it be him just trying to send it a little too hard. I know you were um, next door, but during the post-race interviews, Lewis Hamilton got interviewed first, and then... Russell came up after Lewis mm-hmm. with his interview and said the same exact thing that Lewis said in his interview. Nice. So what, what did he say? Well, Lewis, they asked Lewis, what are you going to do? The summer, okay. summer break is here. What are you going to be doing? And he's like, well, you know, we're just going to train, re- I train refocus. And, 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 of course, Russell goes up and they ask him the same question. He's like, you know, we're going we're gonna to train and refocus. So I hate George Russell, and this is one of our topics. So George Russell is the kind of guy that will steal – <laughs> interview comments from other drivers or they have the same PR person who told them it to could do be that thing. too but he said the same exact thing he could yeah. probably change it up just a little bit he could have said refocus and then said it vice versa mm. yeah but so yeah I hate George Russell and here's the thing um, I don't condone illegal betting so I only do it legally I actually if Russell would have won the race I would have won some money and I was rooting against Russell the entire time Mm-hmm. No amount of money is worth me caring for George Russell. I say that now, but I don't think there's any amount of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even if I want to, I would have been angry about it. Right. Because I just can't stand him. He is the kind of guy that you just can't. And I don't know when that happened. I think I liked him when he was at Williams. Yeah. Maybe I liked him losing. 
I think it was the good. He's a likable loser. It was the moment that he walked out. They were promoting the 007 movie, I think, and he wore that suit and he had people following him in the pits. Mm. He had the the topper hat. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was at that moment for me. But I think we share that same moment. It's like, this guy's trying way too fucking yeah. hard. Yeah, no, I agree. I well, think you have to, I guess he's probably overcompensating because Small Hamilton penis? is oh. who he is. Mm. And Hamilton's like just a fucking rock star, like you to stand out you have to do something and so he's probably being a douchebag on purpose because it's getting people to talk about him and to look at him and i mean look at us right now george russell is the type of guy that tries to pretend to be a rock star but has no tattoos oh that's a good one george russell is the type of guy that will hit on your mom and say no man she was just pretty i was just trying to make her day (laughs) (laughs) george russell is the type of guy that will not get a cock ring like hamilton the Prince Albert. The Prince Albert. <laughs> Which we still don't know if he took it out before the race. Oh. <laughs> Does the FIA check? Hey, drop your pants. They got we need to check, right? How do, how, do they, how do they know for sure? <laughs> drop your pants and cough. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? what? Are we talking about the FIA or jail? <laughs> safety car. Sa- oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> safety. Sa- Save by the safety car. So safety car was one factor, I think, when the race started. I forget the percentage, but halfway through the race. 65 percent. Thank you. 65 mm-hmm. percent chance of a safety car. And the fact that the weather was a little iffy, that there was some sprinkles on the ground, I am beyond surprised that there was only virtual and not an actual mm-hmm. safety car. Or just there's a couple times where people spun out, but they were still able to, like, regain – the car and get back on track and continue their race. Like, that's crazy. You even called it out about Max Verstappen. He spun out full 360 and was still able to keep stay in the race and won the race. The devil tries hard, but Max Verstappen tries harder. That's how we took Kibiat's girl. PK's, um, PK's <laughs> vagina <laughs> tries harder. I know. Seriously. Uh, yeah, we did talk about that. It's kind of weird that you see drivers kind of spin out, go off, and lose all this pace. Max Verstappen does an entire 360 on the track. And somehow still catches up to Leclerc and passes him and goes out to win. It makes no sense to me. Check the car. Yeah, something, something's not adding up. Two plus two does not equal four in this situation. Something's cheating. Someone's cheating. Uh, we, don't, we, don't like, uh, we like Perez. We don't like Max. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't recognize Max as a champion. We talked about this. If he wins this year, he would be a champion mm. if it's clean. But he will be a one-time champion for me. This is this race. They did state that he was a uh, defending world champion, though. Mm. So they act, at least acknowledged it. This race, I think, by contract, they had to say that. Yeah. Yeah, Max was probably complaining. Why don't they say that I'm the champ? Because you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we're moving on to the sad portion of the podcast. The first one is sad, Ricardo. Mm. Listen, we all love the Aussie. He's really, because nice, it doesn't feel like he's a do. nice man. He's a likable man. But he's struggling. Well, that's... He's on Struggle Street right now. Mamas agrees? He agrees. No, he's on Struggle Street right now. never say that about Ricardo. He's um, coming back. He's coming back, and he's going to be better than ever. And you guys watch. Well, that leads me to... Oh, I mean, how do you guys feel about Ricardo's performance? I mean, I know that you he love him, He was but... doing well. He was doing good. And now the five-second penalty, I mean, that's just shit that happens. It is what it is. But he wasn't doing terrible today. With that, the five-second penalty, I think at the time the he race really finished ended. finished ninth. He still would have been No, he was actually down to like 12 mm-hmm. before the end of he the race. He was out of points. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. So he didn't make it. But having said that, uh, Vero announced his retirement. Um, and I want to say from – I've seen you know people announce, like even Kimmy, and, and I've watched videos of other drivers retiring. It, it was always kind of quasi-emotional, their last race. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody was on board as being sad as everybody is about that old retiring. Oh, my he's goodness. He's an I incredibly likable driver. Right. And I think that's reflecting the fact that everybody's kind of sad about it. They're happy for him in a way, I guess, but they're sad about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was talk about who's going to replace him. Um, I think, you know, Ricardo would be a good choice. He likes to jump from team to team. Um, he did mention, uh, you know, Mick as a good option for him to be replaced. I don't know if Stroll's going to want to do that. Imagine Mick goes to goes to um, Austin Martin. Austin Martin. I'm sorry, it's a significant team. Imagine Mick goes to Aston Martin and does better than Stroll. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think Mick Schumacher should be driving in Formula One at all. It's not let alone moving up. 
Yeah, I think Mink has had like two good races in the last two years. And we everybody's about like, that. oh my God, he's so fucking great. Yeah, he gets in the points once and they're like, he's then, he's good. Like, no, he's not. Yeah. I mean, even Grosjean had points. Come on. Right. I mean, Hulkenberg still shows up on the, the top 20, on the 21 drivers. Like, And I think Hulkenberg should be higher up on the standings. And by that, I mean above Latifi. Absolutely. Because I think he plays better on his first race, first and only race, than Latifi did. That's just me, though. I was yeah. going to ask, who do you think the better driver is, Latifi or Mick Schumacher? But it's Schumacher because the Schumacher at least has points. Yeah. Right. I forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> Latifi has been in Formula 1 for three years now. And hasn't got a single point. He's gotten a – he got points last season. Yeah. Did he? I think he yes. got a point. But it was a point. It was a double fi- uh, double podium finish. Double, uh, double fist. Sorry, he got double, double fisted. He got double, double fisted last point season. Finish Tell me what you're really William. thinking about. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton? What? 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 Oh, what? Oh. No, but Sebastian Vettel is definitely going to be missed. He has a lot of years in Formula One, four world champions, championships. I just – he's doing a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. He's, very, he's very vocal about the things that he's passionate about. Mm-hmm. It's kind of c- counter uh, intuitive what he does for a living, which is mm-hmm. a Formula One racer, but he's all into like the environment, and I appreciate that. But I think that's um, – I don't know if you watched his full video, um, but – he pretty much talks about that kind yeah. of stuff. So he's alluding to the fact that it's not just his family. It's just the overall well-being of, like, other things that he is retiring for. Yeah. Mama agrees with Vettel. She wants a world where she can go outside and poop in peace. Oh, that's a string cut. Or wire. Uh, same, same girl. Same. Oh, she's tired. Um, predictions. Predictions for next race. Now, we're, we're going to be on a summer break. The next race is going to be in Belgium. Uh, and then from then, it's going to be in the Netherlands. And we'll be there for that race. And be there. Mm-hmm. Live and in person. Uh, but the next race is coming up. It's going to be Belgium. That's on August 28th. So, predictions. Uh, what do you guys think is going to happen? Yeah, pan over there. Are we talking about predictions for the end of the season or just for the next race? I think for the next race. But if okay. you want to give me an end of the season prediction, I will take it. I think Hamilton finally wins. I think Hamilton comes back and wins. Uh, this is for next race? Yeah. Okay. I thought you meant end of the season. I'm like, well, no. I'll, I applaud that. So first place, Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Okay. Second prediction. Mm. She's giving me hints to what I should say. Uh, I don't know. I think George gets a DNF. He's been doing too good. George, DNF. And then I think Ricardo gets top 10. Okay. James? I'm going to say George gets fifth. Lewis gets third. And Max gets first. I don't Traitor. care. I don't know who's going to get second, but Traitor. those are my predictions. I think it's going to happen. Traitor. But mm. I do want to touch base on the fact that Leclerc is only four or five points ahead of Sergio. I think Sergio is going to get second. He's going to pass him uh, in the champ- drivers' championship. Then what? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then thereafter, Perez isn't too far off of Max. Right. So it's going to be an interesting battle between those two, as long as Red Bull lets them drive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are your predictions? I think science is going to win first. Hmm. Um, I have hope. I I want to say Perez gets third. And I'm going to say Lando gets second. Ooh, 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 ooh. Lando had the pace today. He Lando gets he's second? Doing all right. he's doing, I think they're doing okay. I mean, this, I think they're doing okay. Um I know that was a different strategy, but the fact that he qualified, the qualifying was great. I think they're getting there. Depending on the track, I see it. Then again, Belgium is known for rain. If it rains, mm-hmm. I can see Lando doing pretty, some pretty good damage. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a much better prediction than the top 10 for Dan Ricardo. But. Well, excuse you. Well, since Dan Ricardo hasn't finished in the top 10 in a long time, you know. <laughs> That's not true. He got double points, not this race, but last race. McLaren got double points. That's right. It did get on the they finish. So, you know, they, they did it one time. Just one time. Just one for the season. No, he's got I don't even want to argue with you guys right now. I don't have I don't have the patience or attitude. So, James, you said you think Paris is going to finish second in the Drivers' Championship or first? 
Drivers Championship? Yeah. Is that what you said? No, I just think it's. I just said Leclerc is, or uh, Perez is going to get ahead of. Okay. Um, Perez is going to get ahead of Leclerc in the drivers' championship. As far as the end of the season, I'm going to say that Max is going to win the drivers' championship okay. and Sergio will get second. Okay. I know we don't want that, but I think that's what it's going to be. Ferrari's out. Somehow, I don't think Ferrari's going to catch up. Somehow I'm going to jump over the barriers in Amsterdam and I'm going to kick Max for seven. I'm going to kick him and I'm going to kick him hard. Kick him in the balls. He's going to set to yeah. sit out one race. No, he won't ever be able to race again after, after I kick him. Pique is not going to be with you after I get done with you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I think uh, Max is going to win the championship. Uh, the way Mamas is looking at you, she said, how dare you I say know, that? I know, but I do think that Mercedes has a good chance of winning the Constructors' Championship. So, oh, winning that. the Constructors' Championship? Yeah. Oh, Okay. It's too early for me to make any end of the season predictions. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for next one. Yep. All right. Anything else, guys? Nothing for me. I'm excited for uh, the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a very good time. And uh, again, we'll, you get to see Jessica climb over the barriers and try to find Max. And kick him. And kick him. So. Mark my words. <laughs> It'll be fun. All right, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.